This is a lecture in the course Climate 401 in the Department of Climate and Space Sciences and Engineering at the University of Michigan. It is also listed in the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences as Earth 401. This first lecture is, what is this class about? The name of the course is Geophysical Fluid Dynamics but the attention of the course is more narrow than the broad field of geophysical fluid dynamics and it's focused on an introduction to dynamic meteorology. It is actually the second in our series on dynamical meteorology and the course will start with a brief review of the material that was covered in that first course. We look at the fluid dynamics of the neutral atmosphere on a rotating planet. We also look at the atmospheric processes that are important to the transport of heat, momentum, and mass that are important to the Earth's climate. What specifically is in the course? We start with the structure of the atmosphere, the fundamental forces of the atmosphere, and then we look at coordinate systems that we use to describe atmospheric motions. We look at two different perspectives or points of view on how you look at a fluid, the Eulerian and the Lagrangian reference frames, and we introduce the concept of the material derivative. One of the key aspects of the course is to look at scale analysis and the equations that govern the motion of the atmosphere. This is a way to, in fact, simplify the more complex equations that describe fluid motions in their entirety. And then we look at the balance of forces on a rotating planet, including the thermal wind and the principles of geostrophy. We will rely on a perspective or a recasting of the equations into their form that look at vorticity, that is, rotating aspects of a fluid and divergence and we will look at the concept of potential vorticity and the links between divergence and vertical motion. The focus of the course is, in fact, on extratropical waves and mid-latitude cyclones, and therefore we will spend quite some time on quasi-geostrophic balance, that is, middle-latitude dynamics. This stands in contrast to tropical dynamics. If we make it through this material and have time and interest, then other things that we might study is to study a little more deeply waves in the atmosphere, including the use of perturbation theory, tropical waves and hurricanes, the application of the scale analysis techniques to the tropics and the balance of forces in the tropics, the general circulation of the atmosphere, the dynamics and the distribution of trace constituents, which is very closely related to the general circulation of the atmosphere, and another possible subject would be boundary layer dynamics, the Ekman layer and Ekman pumping and the spin down of cyclones. But any of these subject areas would be covered in less detail than the material that precedes it. As the outcomes of the class it's very important to understand the general concept of scale analysis and how to make approximations and how to make arguments based on fundamental principles. It's a way to simplify problems to make them more easy to do. Since it's very important in Earth's dynamics and other planetary dynamics, you will also know how to derive and think about the vorticity equation. You will know how to identify the wave equation in the process of seeking a wave-like solution. And of course, I hope that everyone walks out of here knowing something more about the weather and the climate. Fundamental notions that you will learn, the importance of the conservation equation. This underlies our ability to do many problems and an ability to think scientifically, and it's especially useful if you want to think about climate and climate change. Atmospheric motions organize in, dis in distinct spatial and temporal scales. They don't just occur randomly. We have things like hurricanes and tornadoes and these mid-latitude cyclones that I, I mentioned. 
Most of the dynamical disturbances of the atmosphere can be classified either as waves or vortices. There is a mean circulation in the atmosphere, which is known as the general circulation, and this is important to the structure of the atmosphere. Again, where it's hot, where it's cold, is very strongly related to dynamics. In middle latitudes, the atmosphere has two dominant balances, the hydrostatic balance and the geostrophic balance. And when we think about weather and the effects of of, say, wind and storms on the environment, and when we think about how things change, what we're really thinking about is how, how do we understand and calculate deviations from these balances. These balances are always trying to, to pull the atmosphere back to their mean balanced states. And what we are often most interested in is changes to these balances. And that is what this class is about.